A very popular idea in the early 90s, which is when I started this work, was to leverage the power of Darwinian evolution in order to come up with new clever designs because everyone believed, if you, if you believe that enzymes evolved, the, then you believe that these remarkable um, catalysts, these ways of doing chemistry in such a remarkable way can come about through natural selection. And so people wanted to harness the power of natural selection, go into the lab and invent new catalysts, new enzymes by using that power. Well, people weren't very far into this when they found that it wasn't working. Uh, you can select things, but none of them compared to the exquisite enzymes we have in life. And a lot of these projects were going on around me, people trying to harness the power of evolution. It never worked. People would, you know, try to get a paper out of it, trying to say it worked a little bit, and there was some excitement for some time, but eventually the field really came to realize that uh, you can't easily get things like natural enzymes. They don't appear to come out of laboratory selection. All the while that was going on, I was coming at it from another angle, which was to look at the constraints on gene sequences and protein sequences and see if the constraints were loose enough that evolution could work or if they were too tight so that evolution couldn't work. And I was consistently starting to find that they were too tight, that, that the target that had to be hit for something to work as an enzyme was too small for accidental changes, accidental, accidental mutations to hit that target. That's what I was finding.